Welcome again, folks, uh, for speak louder. OK. Uh, welcome again. My name is Antonio. Uh, in this next talk, I'm going to talk about device provisioning at the edge, specifically what the team did over the past two to three years to make it possible to provision a device uh, for the edge. Uh, I'm an engineer at Red Hat working for eight years. Uh, right now, I'm working with a team of eight engineers on rel for edge uh, This is the slide, like somebody of you already seen it. Uh, I've already seen it. We build rel for edge uh, We take care of Fedora IoT2, along with the upstream community led by Peter. And we develop and maintain all the technologies that make rel for edge rel for edge and Fedora IoT, of course. Um, for instance, the, the FDO secure device onboarding, green boot that I've shown earlier, and the simplified provisioner, which is the topic of this talk. Not in picture, uh, unfortunately. And so the, the agenda for this talk, we're gonna talk about how do we provision a device at the edge, what the requirements are for this process, or at least what we've been gathering in the field and based on experience by talking to many hardware partner and vendors too, and which tools have we developed in order to meet these needs, and what we have learned so far, and what's next to do. So at the beginning, uh, I really struggled with all of this. Peter Robinson has been preaching this uh, division in, in the flow, so at the in, at the left side, you have the build phase. The build phase is when you actually build uh, rel for edge or Fedora IoT. That part for us uh, has been done through Image Builder. You basically uh, specify the package set, some configuration option, maybe some files to inject, maybe some kernel arguments to tweak, and then what you end up having is an artifact. This artifact can be a raw image, compressed raw image, can be an installer like the simplified provisioner, or can be Anaconda itself, can be an MEI, anything that boots uh, can, be, can be made at this phase. So in this phase, you, you're not playing with the hardware, with the device, you just build the artifact that you wanna put on the device, or that you wanna install with. Then the, this topic is about the, the middle layer, the middle balloon there, and it's the provisioning part. The provisioning part is the part where you have 10,000 devices and you wanna effectively and efficiently uh, flash an OS onto the device and make sure that it is ready to boot. And ready to boot here means so many things. The provisioner of whatever provision the system can just flash the image onto the disk, or it can run and integrate with things like secure device onboarding, can talk to the hardware for security sensitive, uh, things like talking to the TPM, storing keys, all of this, uh, all of the things that has to be done at provisioning. The analogy here is, for me at least, the way I understood it, is the, uh, the Microsoft uh, part of the world. I know this is a Linux conference, not pertinent, but still. Uh, Microsoft can ship pre-built laptop, laptops that already have Windows, so they provision them very early. And then they ship that to you, you power them on, and they onboard. Usually you have a Windows key or something connects back to the central Microsoft data center and says, okay, this is, uh, this is actually a, a system that has been uh, registered with us and it works. So the provisioning part is usually done at the manufacturer, uh, where you have, again, thousands of devices, you wanna install the very same image uh, of the operating system onto them and just, just them simply uh, ship them or sell them. And then there is the onboarding part, still a reference to the next talk in this room uh, because it's about the onboarding part for us that is done securely by uh, two mechanisms mainly. We use FDO and Ignition, and Irene and Sarita are gonna talk about that later too. For this talk, we're focusing on provisioning. So at the beginning, uh, we tried to gather some of the requirements of what this, what this process should have. And the very first one was it has to be unattended. Nobody has to you know, interactively uh, type on a keyboard or watching a screen like a 
Huh? Zero touch. Zero touch, yes. Uh, so we, we, don't want, we don't want that. We basically want somebody, for instance, to grab a USB key or boot the system, the provisioner, remotely and just install on a fleet of devices. And the number here can go pretty high. Like, again, we're talking about thousands of devices that you want to flash the very same, in the very same way with the very same base operating system. And, and so the first requirement for this provisioning part was unattended, hopefully fast. Uh, which is somehow different from normal installation and installers where you're actually there, clicking the mouse, selecting the disk, maybe doing something else. You want the provisioner uh, to, to go as fast as it can and to be able to scale uh, 2,000 of devices and just works. Just install the system, ready to power on. And that's why the second requirement here is should support remote installs. Uh, at the beginning, we were talking about Pixie and other uh, you know, remote install mechanism, Pixie isn't secure. Uh, so what we've settled up was just use UFI HTTP boot. So that has been a requirement from, from the beginning for us. Uh, you basically have a web server that serves the NITRD, the kernel, a couple of kernel command lines to drive uh, the actual installation and then, and then install it. All right, you provision it. And yeah, the other requirements are similar to this. We wanna be able to tweak uh, something into the installation or the resulting system. Uh, an example is the console kernel argument. Maybe you have thousands of devices where the kernel, well, the, yeah, the console is on TTI yes, something or TTI something in general, and you want that to be the same over the, uh, over the same hardware. So the provisioner should su support something like this. Partitioning is also one of the requirements that we got, partitioning and injecting files and directory. We're not doing that right now at the provisioning, at provisioning time. We're doing this mainly at build time, uh, but we're gonna find a solution maybe later in the future to also do this uh, at provisioning because we've been asked, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's a hard problem to solve. Yeah, it's a, that, that's why I'm just mentioning. Especially on the edge. Exactly, I mean, I'm listing this there because those have been discussions and points that we've taken from you know, from various parties, customers, partners, users, the Fedora IoT community, maybe. So we had these requirements. <coughs> and as I said, these two specifically are, are done at build time. Um, interact with the hardware like TPM, that's something that of course, if you have an installer booting, that's doable. So we've been able to do this uh, just fine. And it has to be secure. You know, many definition of what this means uh, for us even just interacting with the other TPM was enough. Um, and yeah, so the idea that we came up uh, with was having a, you know, Peter called this a minimal tiny initRD installer at the time. And you know, what that meant was just create an initRD, pack something in there, like a kernel, initRD, some tools to actually write the image onto disk and any other tool that we need for this. And then make it also bootable over HTTP boot. And of course, flashing an image onto this. That's the very first requirement. You have an image, you run the provisioner, you wanna provision the device with that image. And the other one, as I said, that we come up with was the ability to inject kernel arguments, interact with onboarding, uh, as I will show, we made the simplified provisioner, the provisioner that we use as, as a drag of modules, and that means that it's pluggable. We have a couple of uh, other drag of modules like uh, the FDO1, which is part of the onboarding that we can quote unquote easily plug in. So the whole system is, is made pluggable uh, by using a list drag for us. Just to support encryption, right now this is also, again, the part where we already built the image encrypted. Uh, but again, in the future, that may change. Like, we can do live re-encryption at provisioning time. Maybe that's, uh, that will be a thing. Right now, we're doing that at onboarding, though. And we're building the image already encrypted. And lastly, this is one of the things that we get tasked every time. The installer should extend the raw image to the full disk capacity. So we have a raw image, maybe it's compressed. Uncompressed, it's 14 gigs, or something like that. We DD the image, we basically flash the image onto a disk, which is 100 gig, for instance. 
And at that point, you know, what we've been asked is, okay, but I need to grow that root file system to take on the full disk space on my device. Because of course you want to leverage the whole, you know, hardware that you have. And so this provisioner has to support something like this. So we initially created the simplified installer, uh, but that was causing a lot of confusion. Peter is already like, you know, looking at me like you shouldn't say that word. And that's when we called it the simplified provisioner, just to distinguish between the phases. So this is the simplified provisioner that we came up with. We're still calling it simplified installer somewhere in the code, especially in OS build, but uh, we are not struggling, but we're working towards removing that, you know, word in there, basically. Uh, and it's, yeah. And uh, as I said, it's a tiny ISO, like we've been able to pack everything we need into a, an ISO that contains just the kernel, the init RAMFS, and the raw image. So there is no real system running there. We boot the init RAMFS, the kernel, we have the image, we're gonna work with that. All of the simplified provisioner as of today is driven by uh, Dracop modules and system D services in the, into the initRD. Basically, this allowed us to, again, plug as many pieces as we want to control the, uh, the flow of the provisioner itself. For instance, we build, we, we flash the image and then maybe we wanna run FDO to do other stuff. And you, you know, somebody wants to mount the root file system and inject some certificates, things like that. By using Dracut modules for us, uh, this was the way to make this possible. And the reason for having an ISO, like a normal ISO 92 something, is because all of these components, like you can actually unpack the ISO and then you can have this component served over HTTP uh, with HTTP boot and then this stuff can just boot and install the system and run the init RAMFS and the kernel. So what we need to do, of course, is uh, before all of this, once we build, uh, well, when we at the point we build the simplified provisioner, we, of course, need the raw image to work with because that's going to be the, the golden image that we're going to provision over 10,000 devices, for instance. Uh, so we need to build this raw image. We're using Image Builder again. And what we're gonna do, as I've shown in the other talk, is first build an OS3 commit that contains the base system. With that, we're gonna just create a raw image. And this is when partitioning and encryption uh, are taken into account. So at this point, uh, Image Builder is gonna create the raw image out of an OS3 commit for us. What we do with this image, we embed that into the ISO so that the simplified provisional code can use it, uncompress it if needed, and flash onto the devices. Okay, so the way we produce the installer is of course the provisioner, as the slide is wrong, uh, is through image builder again. We have created over time a couple of stages uh, that's how image builder works by having stages that do something on to a rootfs for the provision for the simplified provisioner we created the team created a bunch of stages that we put together in order to basically have the resulting iso that you can see in the image um, what we do is so image builder is basically creating the raw image it's compressed so it takes up less space and then it makes it bootable by you know, ISO Linux, API, and everything else, and then embed also the init RAMFS uh, and the kernel. So all of this for us is done with an ND uh, blueprint <coughs> and uh, command from Image Builder. Yeah, so now onto the requirement on how do you write the image to the disk? Like you have this nice ISO, there is a raw image, and now what we need to do is actually writing that on the disk when we run the simplified installer. So for this reason, we have chosen to use uh, CoreOS installer. For those not familiar with it, it's a project from CoreOS and the CoreOS uh, team that is widely used in OpenShift and it, it's basically the way to flash an image onto a disk. You know, in, in its simplest form, that's what it does. But it can also do something else. It, it support embedding ignition. Uh, as I said, it support compressed raw images. So you can embed a raw image that is compressed and then 
when it writes it down to the disk, it gets uncompressed on the fly. That's a, it's a huge win for us, of course. We can keep the, the ISO itself uh, more concise, basically. It has encryption support. CoreOS installer can be run as a Dracut module itself. We've created, the team created the CoreOS installer Dracut project, and that's a way to run CoreOS installer in a Dracut module. And, you know, being Dracut and being just uh, command lines, uh, tools, we were able to integrate all of this using systemd, basically. That's the framework that we're using. It allows us to order uh, units and, you know, execution the way we want. So we're using systemd there, too. Yeah. So now CoreOS installer is, uh, is really neat, and the way we made it work, it's uh, even so, I think, uh, because the whole execution is driven through kernel arguments. And now, this is, you know, this is, again, neat, because if you want to boot this uh, provisioner remotely, then you want to be able to drive the full provisioning through something like kernel arguments, because, you know, every device is going to come up with this kernel <laughs> command line, and it's going to execute this. And so we were able, by using a system degenerator, to uh, leverage the system, the system degenerator and just parse the kernel command line and then say, okay, we want to install um, the image onto dev VDA. This is a virtual machine, but maybe your hardware has dev SDA or something. So if you have a thousand devices, all these uh, you want to uh, install on dev SDA, you can configure this uh, <laughs> via kernel arguments, and then boot this via HTTP boot so that every device is provisioned in the very same way. There are other things that can be tweaked, like where the image file is, it can be remote. Actually, for HTTP boot, you want this to be, you want the image file kernel argument to be image URL, so you can optionally, CoreOS installer can optionally, optionally fetch the image from a remote location every time. So that, they may be slower, but it works. Uh, it can be made to work. And so this is how we achieve conditional execution uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, basically what I said. Uh, apart from parsing the command line just to derive, to derive the execution and configuring you know, the installation device, we can also tweak how we, uh, how we behave post-install. You know, somebody can install the, well, provision the machine, and then maybe you want to reboot. Maybe you, maybe you don't want to reboot. Maybe after provisioning, you, wanna, uh, you want just to get the hardware, pack it, box it somewhere, and then ship it to the address. So, you know, anything can be, uh, well, this flow can be tweaked by post-install uh, kernel arguments that we provide. Another thing that CoreOS installer Dracut does, our Dracut module, is mounting the ISO so that if the image is local to the ISO, we're gonna, you're gonna, uh, we're gonna have the image available into the initRD so that we can flash it onto the device. And then at the very end, this was the system degenerator for CoreOS installer, we're just gonna run the CoreOS installer service, which is just a command line saying CoreOS installer dash dash install, and then the target disk, post install behavior, where the image is, all of that. So we've been able to achieve this uh, with, uh, with a system degenerator, basically. And as I said, you know, the CoreOS installer service, this is just a snippet. But at the end, it's going to just echo a command, and then it's going to get executed by systemd itself, and it's going to run. Like, I hope this time the demo works, because it's really tiny. So you can see the actual command line, CoreOS installer install, and everything else. Yeah. So. All of these kernel command line uh, options can be configured by an image builder. Uh, so I'll show a couple of uh, a couple of blueprint that uh, you know that we use daily to build the image. Uh, so you can configure the install device. You can configure uh, FDO and ignition. There are various options for FDO. You can configure certificates. You can configure the manufacturing URL and other things that we've been explaining later at the FDO talk and ignition talk. For ignition, you can attach an, uh, a kernel argument to say this is where you're gonna fetch 
uh, the actual ignition configuration. Again, you can configure the, the target disk by a blueprint, all of this together by uh, image builder. Uh, as I was saying, this also integrates, <coughs> integrates very well with uh, FDO, which is secure device onboarding. And uh, I'm repeating myself, but uh, FDO is also uh, a dragnet module, so we can order it after we write the image to the disk. We can have FDO run and do whatever it needs to do with an installed system, like registering keys to the TPM and other things that uh, you know at provisioning we do with FDO. Then, so uh, for this demo, like I'm using a normal virtual machine. What I've done is I've created a simplified installer uh, based on RHEL 9.2 in this case, but all of this is coming to Fedora really soon because we got the you know, latest bits of everything we need. So expect it in the next month or so. All of this can be tested. It's pretty exciting. As you can see, Peter laughing, uh, smiling, actually. Uh, so all of this can be tested with also Fedora. And so I've, I've created a simplified installer using this blueprint. And as I, as I was explaining earlier, like you can see I can customize the installation device. This is, this is a simplified provisioner meant to install on the dev VDA disk. That's usually, uh, you know, Kimu and like. And then what I wanted to do also was uh, add a first boot kernel argument for, for ignition so that the first boot of the system also runs ignition. So this is really easy to, to digest and grasp. It just fo follows the uh, image builder blueprint options. Another thing that I can show is also the, the FDO blueprint. Uh, well, the FDO snippets in the blueprint too. You can see we can, we can uh, configure a bunch of uh, options for FDO itself. In this very simple case, we configure uh, the manufacturing server URL. Maybe you know, in a factory, you have 10,000 machines, one FDO server. Uh, you create a simplified installer for that server so you can have the very same image that installs on 10,000 devices all at once by just building this image. And then there are a bunch of uh, <clears throat> security sensitive options too. Uh, this example is running insecure for various, for various reasons, but we're not building this. This is just to show that there are aspects and uh, pieces of the blueprint that are made just for the simplified provisioner. And this comes from the integration we had in the past with the image builder folks. Really? Um, all right. Well, it seems I have 10 minutes left. So what I'm going to do here is run a simplified installer provisioner, sorry Peter, uh, to install on a virtual machine. You can see somewhere that uh, no, it's a, I don't know. It's red.net. Actually, it's red.3. So you can see here I have this image. The, this image unpacked, you have already seen it. Just the FEI directory images with kernel and initramfs, the ISO Linux, you know, standard folder, and then the raw image. So if we go back here, and, you know, this is the simplified provisioner booting. And you can see the very same, similar uh, configuration uh, kernel op options that I've shown in the in the slide. So we're going to install to dev VDA, and the image file is run media ISO. That is something that CoreOS installer Dracot itself is going to mount for us, and then CoreOS installer can install it. So if we boot this, at some point it's going to yeah in a, in a moment it's going to show. I know this is tiny. Hopefully everybody can see that, uh, but you can see right at the first line, 664, that there is just a normal command line. It's core S installer install where the VDA as we've configured and the file is there. So the image file, the compressed image file is there. Then there is insecure too, I've explained like just for uh, demo purposes. Uh, you can see all of this went unattended. I just, you know, I just edited the uh, kernel command line just to show you, but otherwise, it's like 60 second delay and then 
this thing is going to boot on itself. It's going to run unattended. At this point, is still writing the image uh, to the disk. And you can see at least, you know, this is a virtual machine, so it's pretty fast. But we've been testing this on Fitlets in other devices, like I think Intel Nux 2, uh, ARM, device. ARM devices too. Uh, so it can be slow depending on the actual hardware that you have, but in general, it's a, it's a fast process. Oh, and you, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this now it's gonna reboot into the, the actual rel edge system. Uh, this is not really important. What I wanted to show is that the whole process can run, yeah, can run unattended, uh, it's pretty fast too, which is, which was one of the requirements that we got at the beginning, and it's really tiny, just an ISO. You can, uh, you can put it on a USB stick to install manually. You can boot uh, from from the uh, from it, yeah from the network in order to streamline this provision. So, yeah, what we learned so far, and bear in mind we're still learning. Uh, requirements are coming probably daily, uh, depending on which, you know, who we talk to, uh, what their actual needs are. So what we learned so far is that many of our users slash customers don't want to use raw images. And uh, this is legit to some extent, although raw images buy us something like security, like IMA and things like that. So we're trying also to be opinionated into, uh, you know, this whole process. We're saying this is probably the best way uh, it's a bit arrogant, but you know, trust us. Like, depending on uh, on the various talks that we had. In a lot of cases, it's not that they don't want to, but they don't understand why. Exactly. And it's changing that process. Exactly. And it's an education process of why. That we need to do. Exactly. Uh, and so they just want to use, they're used to, to have an installer, like Anaconda. They, they go there, they script that with kickstarts. Uh, if you're familiar with that, Chad is definitely familiar. Uh, so you script that, you want just an installer, you use the installer on a fleet of devices, or that can be also be uh, heterogeneous, so like even different too, and they want to have the logic to derive which system it is on the Kickstart itself. You know, that, that is cool, that works, but again, having something like, the, you know, a single raw image that can be FS verified and, and you know, all the security mechanisms that can be done, it's, pro it's what we're saying is better for security reason too. But as Peter mentioned, it, it's an education process that we need to do with the customers and with users and the community to help them understand this is definitely a better way. Making the decisions on a device by device basis on the edge is slow, open to security attacks, um, open to problems because you're basically artisanally creating every single device to deploy it rather than having the guaranteed identical device across you know, tens of It's an education process that, yeah. you know, they, we, this is what we're fostering basically right now. This is probably a good way to provision your edge devices. And as I said, you know, if you don't have a raw image that is already packed as a, as a whole, things like IMA and other security sensitive things and processes do not really work. It's very difficult to make IMA work with Anaconda. You know, there have been talkings, but uh, we're not there yet and we're probably never will be for Anaconda. So this make it easier, or at least this, this is what we've been told. And then the other things that we've learned is that many people and users and customers want to have partitioning at provision, at the provisioning time. You know, again, they're used to have something like Anaconda where you can actually script the kickstart and say, I want VAR here, I want ETC here, whatever. You, you know, you can use your imagination there. and. And you know that with the simplified installer, what we do is basically pre-partition the raw image. And so we're gonna tell you like this is the layout that mostly works. If you wanna tweak it, use uh, the use the image builder blueprint, and then you can have var on a separate partition. And you know, again, user imagination there. You can do uh, you can do whatever you want. For partitioning specifically, there are a couple of areas that we thought about that. You know, we can do this. Uh, one of it is Ignition. Although Ignition does partitioning live on first boot, but it's often pretty, pretty much expensive. Meaning 
Right now, OpenShift uses this, but of course, OpenShift doesn't have any resource limit. They can have like 32 gigs of RAM. They can have tons of GPU, CPU power. Uh, and this doesn't work, of course, for the edge. Maybe for some hardware works, but you know, if so we- So sorry, like, you can't get OpenShift in the data center. You pretty much got guaranteed power, guaranteed network bandwidth, all yep. sorts of other things like that on the edge. Like, if you lose power, And yeah, so at the end of the day, leveraging ignition in OpenShift is okay, as Peter explained. For us at the edge, it's probably a, a no-go to begin with. Ignition can do root reprovisioning, so it can completely change the, root, the layout of the file system on the disk. On, in OpenShift, that's fine. At the edge, not likely. Then, um, so yeah, so what we came up with was Maybe we need to support partitioning for the raw image uh, at build time. So that makes sense. That's something that's it's on the roadmap already. Maybe you, you can have a blueprint option just for the simplified installer to, uh, well, not for, for the raw image to partition it the way you want. Again, maybe you want bar on a different partition. Uh, again, as I, as I said, we can uh, look into on the fly uh, reprovisioning of the file system although that's tricky, or we can do like first boot reprovisioning. Maybe we can optimize ignition itself to avoid, I don't know, reprovisioning a 100 gig uh, root file system because that would be impossible to fit into memory too. So those are just you know, scenarios that we're gonna run through and, um, and think about. The last one is something that we've been talking in the past. We didn't get any traction. We're at the conference. If you like the idea and want to contribute, you know, uh, that makes sense. Right now, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that we've been told is, how do I test it? You know, rel for edge and for IoT easily. I don't want to build the image. I want to have you know something that boots and I can just navigate into it and understand if it fits my needs. Uh, so right now, we don't provide the live image, but if there is any interest, you know, traction from the community itself, we can also. Uh, Explore that, and that is meant like the slash fcos. Well, star fcos systems do provide a live image, so that you can actually jump on the system before installing it. Maybe create a template of the installation that you wanna uh, produce with CoreOS installer, and then just boot that. So that is something that's it's not officially on the roadmap, but that I think we would be keen to uh, to have as an input from the community and maybe some some out of time. A couple of links here, just you know, from CoreOS installer to some Red Hat documentation on how we do simplified provisioning with FDO and Ignition. And that's it. <laughs>